And I also run my own, my own private investigation security consulting company called Link Security Group. And finally, I still maintain my military affiliation as an armor reservist, where I'm still a practicing Army Counterintelligence Special Agent. So it actually all began uh, for me when I was 17. I joined the, the Army straight out of high school. Uh, it was just one week, uh, one week summer vacation, and I was thrust into a hood. Uh, from there, uh, after basic training and advanced training, uh, was reassigned to Fort Hood, Texas. And uh, was immediately thrust into uh, my first deployment overseas to Iraq. I uh, came back from that deployment. Uh, and it was only about a year later, I was sent to another deployment to Iraq. Uh, when I came back from that mission, I had met uh, some people who worked in military intelligence. Uh, one that was overseas. And when I saw what they were doing, I said, this sounds very, very fascinating. This is something I would like to do. Uh, so when I got back, I switched my job uh, to counterintelligence uh, and after completion of the training uh, was yet again <laughs> redeployed to Afghanistan this time, uh, returns, and then uh, a little more time I spent in Korea and then I returned again and then just recently in 2020 I came back from Afghanistan again. So that's the military background and actually the foundational skills I was able to gain for private investigation. Uh, but I decided at the end of 2016 that I should get out of the active duty military and see if I could leverage the skills I gained from the military uh, out in the private sector. Uh, and in doing so, I decided to start my own company, which was Link Security Group. Uh, we focused on private investigation and security consulting. Uh, and I took the skills from the military uh, that they taught me and brought them uh, into that realm. And it was actually a very natural transition. Uh, and then separately in 2019, like I said, the, I joined the, Palm, the team of Palm Investigations uh, where I assumed a director of security and training role. I also realized at that time that it was, it was very uh, lacking in the private investigation realm was a standard. And uh, I wanted to see if we could reach out, start reaching out to universities around the, the country and determine if I could help raise that standard. So the first thing I did was earlier this year, I actually wrote a book uh, called How to Start a Private Investigation Business, A Proven Blueprint for Success. Um, the whole purpose was to raise the standards of young entrepreneurs and, and people getting out of the military, intelligence community, law enforcement, or people who never spent any time in those fields uh, who wanted to actually try their hand in private investigation. Because I realized during my time in private investigation, as I remain now, there is really not much of an understanding of the field. And it's so robust, so diverse. Uh, that you can you could literally find a, a, a little niche or you can work on general investigations uh, in any manner that you want. So that was the whole purpose of today's uh, brief. So the first thing I want to actually do is define private investigation for you guys and the actual term. So every state in the United States has a different definition of private investigation. Uh, including uh, Washington, D.C. as well. And then you'll also find the term private investigation or private detective different uh, internationally as well. Uh, and that just goes to show you how wide ranging that is. We're, we're unlike uh, specialty fields such as a cardiologist, uh, you know exactly what that individual specializes in and works in, but not so much for private investigation. If I were to tell you most people that you're a private investigator, I'm a private investigator, they wouldn't have any idea, or they would think they have an idea based on movies, or television, or maybe someone they, they've run into before, or maybe a insurance claim they dealt with. Uh, so the actual best definition I found thus far comes from the state of Virginia, uh, the Department of Criminal Justice Services, and they specifically say, a private investigator means any individual who engages in the business of 
or accepts employment to make investigations to obtain the information on crimes or civil wrongs, the location, disposition, or recovery of stolen property, the causes of accidents, fires, damages, or injuries to persons or to property, or evidence to be used before any court, board, officer, or investigative committee. Now, I mean, obviously that's very long. And as I've worked in the last couple of years on the private investigation side, I realized that we're not actually in the investigation business. We're actually in the information and fact finding business. So actually the term, an independent fact finder who works for compensation is a good example of what a private investigator is. So I want to go over a couple of the traits for some of you who might actually be interested in the field that I felt uh, were very relevant to the field. Uh, I think that would help you stand out if you're interested in getting to this field. And that is attention to detail, persistence, trustworthiness, passion, people skills, and innovation. So I noticed in this field, uh, attention to detail is very key. Uh, you have to uncover facts and, and doing so you can't approach it as a generalist mindset. You have to approach it in a specialist mindset where you can hone in on that specific detail that might blow the case wide open, uh, whatever that detail might be, whether it's uh, you're analyzing a, a phone record and you see that a spouse is uh, calling a strange number and it appears at odd times, you might want to hone down in on that number. Um, persistence. So there's a lot of the specialty skills that I found are the baseline in, in this field uh, have, have been physical surveillance, investigative interviewing, uh, evidence collection, uh, database research. Uh, some of the stuff that actually what sounds very uh, interesting can be quite boring sometimes. And the, the best investigators I know have to have that persistence to uh, keep going when, when the going gets tough. Uh, trustworthiness. There's a lot of people who feel when they're working with their with private invest with private investigators that they're not very trustworthy. In fact, if a lot of pr private investigators you meet, you'll 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 kind of get this very uh, uh, odd feeling about them when you're talking to them. That, that it's almost like a kind of like a, a like a grungy, slimy type of feeling. Uh, and it's unfortunate that the the field attracts a lot of um, individuals who are unskilled or who who want to uh, do, go about the wrong way of doing things. So you must be trustworthy when, when working with those clients. Um, again, I mentioned passion already. Uh, people skills, you have to be able to talk to people, especially when you're gathering information. Uh, and you have to be able to talk to people from all different backgrounds. I have to be able to relate to them, uh, show empathy uh, for their concerns and their causes. Because uh, unfortunately, a lot of them are coming to you, especially as clients uh, that are it's at the worst situation. They might have a child custody matter where they're fighting for the, the rights for, uh, to have custody of their children, or they might be dealing with an infidelity matter. Uh, and your discretion, uh, of course, and confidentiality in that matter is, is very key. And then you also have to have a baseline of innovation. You have to constantly be thinking of ways to help further your investigation along. Uh, and if, if you don't, you, you won't last long in the field. Uh, for example, uh, at my company, we've actually had to do things such as use drones to conduct uh, surveillance. Uh, we've even conducted with working with our independent labs, we've conducted uh, mitochond forensic mitochondrial DNA recovery off of a bone sample. So you have to think outside the box and uh, be able to move the case case forward and help your client out. So I want to go over a couple of types, some of the types of investigations that private investigators actually work on because a lot of people have a, again, a misunderstanding of what those types of investigation are. But first you have to understand that there's two types of investigations. There's private sector investigations and there's public sector investigations. Public sector is everything you've probably seen before. It's it's conducted usually by any kind of police department or intelligence agency. 
such as the FBI or the Diplomatic Security Service uh, or your local police department uh, here in, in, in New York City, the NYPD uh, would be an example of an organization that conducts public investigations. And already, again, I already mentioned that, that private investigators, uh, there is actually no limit uh, what they can investigate as long as it's legal and ethical, uh, they can investigate it. Whereas that public sector investigations, they usually have some sort of uh, ceiling on them in regards to budget or, or kind of restraints as far as how much they can go into it until the case is closed. So some of the types of investigations you'll see along uh, in the private investigation realm include accident investigation, uh, asset investigation, corporate investigation, criminal investigation, cyber investigation, domestic investigation, fraud investigation, insurance investigation, missing persons investigations, and technical investigations. So an accident investigation is the, the systematic review of, of how an accident actually took place. Uh, usually you'll see this with you know, motor vehicle accidents, but you also see this with running accidents or any kind of accident, any kind of structural collapse. You might be called in, usually by an attorney or an insurance company to investigate further. Uh, an asset investigation usually gets roped into that domestic investigation realm. Uh, you're trying to uncover usually hidden assets, uh, and this usually comes about in the cases of uh, divorce. Uh, people believe that their, their spouse is hiding um, either money or anything tangible or intangible that's uh, from them during the divorce proceedings. Uh, there's corporate investigation. It, usually this, this goes into the realm of uh, contract compliance and you're ensuring that uh, company A can is meeting their obligations or if company A is merging with company B that uh, everything is, is A-OK -okay. and it usually goes back to some sort of background investigation onto the, the actual staff of the company, make sure everything is, is, is all right. Uh, criminal investigation, this is the one that people actually equate the most to private investigation. Uh, you'll usually find yourself backing up the, uh, either the defense or, or the prosecutor's office to gather evidence if a crime has been committed or, or the dispute that your, the client has actually committed the crime. Uh, cyber investigation. This is one of the newer ones uh, over the last 10 years has really exploded. And uh, usually your skills are utilized in some of the other fields, uh, specifically to gather information, to, again, to dispute or, or the, the, that a crime has taken place or gather evidence needed. And it's usually gone through uh, by computer forensic uh, investigation. Uh, in this specialized field, you, you could easily bill between $300 and $500 an hour if you have the skills necessary for that. Domestic investigation. This is the overarching term for uh, many, the, when you encounter private investigators you, you think of, this is the people who work on those child custody matters or infidelity uh, cases uh, and help bring closure for either that boyfriend or girlfriend or that, or that husband or wife. Uh, actual fraud investigation is usually goes back to uh, a financial nexus. Uh, you might want to uh, see if someone's cooking the books in a company, uh, do a forensic audit of that and determine uh, if, if there's something wrong or if everything's okay. Actual insurance investigations, a lot of people who've dealt with this, uh, it's usually after an insurance claim is filed by somebody and it may be bogus, they might say that their leg is broken and they have no use of it. Uh, and the private investigator may be called in to confirm or deny that's true. Uh, and the investigator might uncover that although they said their leg is broken, they're out there playing with their dog or they're walking around uh, on the park route going for a run and obviously the leg is not broken. Uh, missing persons investigations. It's a, a lot of times after the police have conducted an investigation, they may come up cold on it and the case, case files for them is stacking up and they're unable to uh, investigate any further. So family might feel that they would have to bring in a private investigator to help bring, uh, bring closure to the case. Uh, and then there's technical investigations. Uh, if, you, if you believe that there is, if someone believes that there is a 
audio or, or visual bug, as we call them, uh, in their office or, or in their residence or in their vehicle, a uh, technically trained investigator can uh, do what's called a bug sweep and determine if th that, that is true or false. Um, also under this realm is the polygraphers uh, who conduct uh, polygraphs uh, for any, any number of reasons, whether they're people are trying to get onto a, a police department or, um, or if they're just trying to uncover who stole something in an employee theft situation. So that's just a, a few of the broad categories uh, private investigators actually investigate. And it's, again, never ending, a never ending field. So I really would want to take the time today to open up the floor as early as possible and see if I could uh, answer any questions about specifically about private investigation uh, at this time. You got here in the chat. I don't know if you could see it, Edward. Um, how I do you go? You can see it, okay. Okay, so I see it's from a manual. How do you go about becoming a PI if you don't have any law enforcement experience as an officer? Okay, let me start with the manual here. We'll do one at uh, a time. So, <laughs> yeah. So how do you go about becoming a PI if you do not have any law enforcement experience as an officer? So it's a common misconception that you have to have experience as a police officer to become a private investigator. So it's, it's not true. Uh, you have to either be sponsored initially and work under someone's license to gather that private investigation experience. And then you can either stay with that company or you can actually go and start your own company. So New York, for example, requires three years of investigative experience, which you can gain by working for a private investigation company, never having been a police officer uh, or, or, or working for the intelligence community and then actually go about and open your own company if you want, or stay work for that company. Um, Melissa says, can you repeat the statement about women in the field? I do wanna tell everyone that this field is not, while there is, is a lot more men in the field, this, this field is absolutely for women as well. Um, it, bring a different side of things, a different way to, to, of attacking a problem set. Uh, and actually my highest paid investigator in Maryland as a woman, um, it's, it really just comes down to it. If you have those traits that I talked about before, uh, and it doesn't matter um, in the end. Uh, where can we, Nicole says, where can we apply to become a private investigator? Nicole, you'll have to actually um, reach out to companies that are, are looking for uh, investigators. Uh, that could be anywhere, I don't know what state you're from, um, but every state again has uh, different requirements and you'll have to meet those initial requirements to uh, become a private investigator. Uh, and usually the, the become a entry level investigator. It's just really having, being over the age of 18 and having a clean criminal background. Jorge says, is there a way to become a detective without starting law enforcement? Uh, again, uh, you don't have to start in law enforcement. You, you might want to take this education you're getting at John Jay. Um, and you can parlay that and to get some additional uh, skills-based training at a private investigation company. And then if you want to start your actual, um, your own company, you can do so. Uh, Nicole here is also asked, is there any internships to become a private investigator? Well, Nicole, I'm glad you asked. I'm gonna put in the chat, uh, reach out here. I'm going to put my Palm Investigations email. I don't know if you're gonna be staying in New York after this is over with, but we're gonna be looking to be expanding our uh, intern program. And so if you're interested in uh, a session like that, we can talk further after this is over with. Uh, Kristen also again asked about the internships and it's going um, it's also going to be we're going to be putting some of that on the actual John Jay uh, Career Fair website as well. 
Um, Nicole asked here, what, what websites should, uh, should we look at? I'm not exactly sure, Nicole, if you could expand on what you're talking about. Uh, are you talking about like specialized training or are you talking about uh, jobs? Okay, we'll get back to that. Uh, Roxana says, what's the name of my private investigation firm? So I'll put that in the chat. It's link security group. And also, if you're based out of New York or New Jersey, there's Palm Investigations. Going through here. Uh, Marusha says, I financially secure this field. Marusha, I'll tell you this. Uh, unlike the law enforcement or intelligence community realm, if you're doing this full time and you're, and you're running your own company, it can be very financially secure especially if you get a contract with a insurance company, uh, they'll keep you busy year rounds. Uh, investigators bill between $75 an hour and, uh, and $250 an hour. Uh, I've had retainers um, that start at $10,000 per cases and they're billed uh, hourly off of that. So you can be, it's, it can be very um, lucrative in the field. Uh, I don't know about your name. I think it's Ariely. Uh, this is a, does this job require a specific major? No. And that's actually this one of the interesting things about private investigation. Your unique experiences can help work their way into the field. And, you know, you never know what you're going to need. Uh, you may have a strong engineering background and you might be able to work as an accident investigator uh, and explain that the building, how a building structure collapsed and you had that background to do so because you were trained in engineering. Uh, where he says, are there any physical requirements like eye vision? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, if, as far as uh, any states that I've ever looked at their license requirements, I don't know if there's any kind of um, stopping you from, from joining physically wise. I'll put that back in there for the name of my firm, Kristen. So you can get that. And then also Palm Investigations. Uh, this job does not necessarily require a car, especially if you live in a city like New York City, and you have to be able to understand uh, foot surveillance as well. Uh, a lot of people don't even have a car in the city. So it's, uh, it's necessary uh, that you actually can um, navigate without the vehicle, but it is helpful to have a vehicle. And so Rob says, what is the requirements for cyber investigator? Um, if you were specifically wanting to go into computer forensics field, you're going to have to study uh, computer forensics software and programs. Um, Ingrid says the name of the company is not here in the chat. Are you guys seeing what I'm saying? So for Natalia, if you want to start your own New York-based private investigation company, that's just an example, you need three years. Every state is different. Some states don't require any experience to start your company. Some states like Maryland require five. And yes, yeah, sorry, the, uh, so if you want to specialize in a certain uh, investigative track, you can indeed uh, work with your PI company to, to work on a certain type of investigation and get additional training. Every company is different. So quick question. Do I, you not need a license then to work to get those three years? You just need three years to make your own business as a PI. Yeah. So okay. you have to, um, you have to be sponsored under somebody else's license initially, if you don't have any experience. Okay, so if I have a Utah private investigator license, is that valid under someone else's business here? No, you'll have to be, if you want to work in the state of New York, you're going to have to get a New York based okay. private investigation license. And the name of my, my business is Link Security Group. 
And then the other business I work for is called Palm Investigations. Link Security Group is, works out of Virginia and Maryland, and Palm Investigations works out of New York and New Jersey. And I, I'll put it in here again. Uh, it's for if you want to contact me for, and talk further about private investigation, uh, you can do so at ejp at palminvestigations.com. You can also email me at edward at, at linksecuritygroup.com. And links is spelled L Y N X. And does your business specialize in a specific type of investigation? No, my, mine, mine does not. We, if, if I or the, the management crew doesn't have the particular experience, we'll work with uh, someone who does and we'll contract with them to work the investigation. Roxana, there is a no upper age limit, but there is a lower age limit for for most every state that I've ever looked at. It's usually 18 years old, which for the most part should be everyone attending the university. Um, but what upper age? Is that correct? There's no upper age. No, there's no upper age. Okay, thank you. I've, I've never seen it one time. But usually the, the lower age has to deal with uh, state um, licensing laws and the ability to have somebody work um, odd hours uh, or, or because they have to carry a firearm, they have to be, or if they're going to be working in that capacity, they have to be at least 21 years old for, for a handgun, for example. And, and also you can't do, you can, I'm sorry, go ahead. And regarding firearms, uh, are those uh, like facilitated by the um, investigation company, but like you're helping the people that are working for you to get those li licenses, those permits? Yes, that's, and every company is different. Some companies may not allow you to have or, or carry a, a firearm in performance of your duties, but some, some do. Uh, some states only allow you uh, if you're working in a private uh, investigator or a security guard capacity, such as the state of Maryland, uh, to, to be able to carry firearm unless you're law enforcement. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so yes, go ahead and email Kristen. We can we can speak further about uh, the internship opportunity that Palm Investigations is developing. It's it's actually going to be specifically for New York and New Jersey. So uh, do let me know so we can get you on the distribution list when that when that program goes live. Uh, and who are yes, private investigators do get to work with the NYPD. Um, they, it's usually for missing persons uh, investigations. So the NYPD will either work it concurrently with the private investigator at the behest of the family, or they, um, the private investigation company might just take it over. What's up? Hi, Hi, I'm sorry. I'm just asking for his email again. Can you repeat your email, please? EJP at palm, P A L M, investigations.com. Thank you so much. That's it. I don't know specifically if internship experience uh, that you initially gain will be counted towards. I, I think that's a independent uh, company by company thing if they want to count that or if, they, or if they want to actually specifically wait until you're a paid employee uh, for, for that experience. So, Christelle, if you are interested in, in becoming a, what we call a certified ethical hacker, then yes, that is a, is a realm for private investigation under the cyber investigations field. Uh, if you want to read more about this stuff, you can read it in my book, of How to Start a Private Investigation Business, a Proven Blueprint for Success. It's available on Amazon or any other mediums. Thank you. Can you write down the name of the book again? Sure. I'll put it in the chat.
and I put it in the chat. Everyone should be able to see that. Uh, would the internship be similar to a part-time job? Yes, it would It'd be required to show up uh, part of the internship skills, uh, show up in uh, study under uh, more senior private investigators. Okay. I have one last question. What is like the range of pay for a PI out here? So in the state of New York, it usually starts at twenty three fifty an hour. Okay. Um, but I've seen it. I've seen it go again. If you have specialized skills, I talked about some of the uh, specifically the cyber. I I, I have paid um, my my workers down in Maryland and Virginia one hundred dollars an hour for okay. for those specialized investigations. Thank you. Wait, oh my God, that sounded so good. But $100 an hour? And how, like, how does the hours work? Like, the, like, is it, do they get paid by how long it takes to crack a case or what? Yes, so we usually, it's the, the pay is controlled by the client's budget. You, if they want, how long, how long you think it's gonna take, you provide an estimate to the client. And if they're willing to undertake that um, amount, then they pay you, and then you you uh, work off of that. Mm -hmm. So this is only strictly for private investigators, or is this also related to crime scene investigators, or those are two different things? So if you, I haven't specifically worked with anyone who does crime scene investigation. However, part of the criminal investigation realm under private investigation, you might do actual evidence collection like a crime scene investigator. But the problem is it's usually way after the crime has taken place and you're not gonna be freezing a scene like you see in the TV show CSI. Yeah, all that's gonna be long gone and you're gonna have to go back and talk to people uh, and try and recreate uh, the, for the best of your ability from that. And it could be year, years before that the scene actually happens. Uh, there are in the high profile cases, private investigators might be involved uh, earlier on, especially if the family brings them on. And every police department has the po this, different policies for working with private investigators uh, and how much their information they're gonna share with them. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see if we got anybody else. So yes, if you are your own business owner, or hey, you are, you essentially can create your own hours. Sometimes the hours are actually uh, predicated off your off of the, um, the request for the type of investigation. If you believe that um, someone's spouse is cheating and they're doing it between the hours of 3 a.m. and 4 a.m., well, then you're going to have to be out there at, between the hours of 3 a.m. and 4 a.m gathering that information and confirming and denying if that's true or not. So cons of the jobs, there are times when you don't have, if you don't have actual, if you don't have the casework come in, you are responsible for, for bringing your own casework in. There was a lot of people who had trouble initially during um, the start of COVID-19. Uh, a lot of cases weren't coming in. And that's so you have to actually um, 
but th this is happening all around. It wasn't just a private investigation. You actually, uh, you know, had to make sure you were um, prepared uh, financially to weather that storm. Um, so for Cisco, do I work on my own or, or with someone? So for me, it's unique because I actually, not only do I run my own company out of Virginia and Maryland, I also work uh, with a company in New York and New Jersey, and that's, that was Palm Investigations. So I actually do both. Uh, I wear a lot of hats. So Rafael, a clean background. Uh, it's every state is different as far as what, what, they, what they allow. Uh, as far as um, if there's any kind of uh, criminal um, issues. There's several states, such as New Jersey, for example, the, pro the actual private uh, detective program they call New Jersey is administered and controlled by the New Jersey State Police. Uh, so uh, they may have a different requirement, for example, than uh, someone who does not. And Francisco, what about the people you employ? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, if you could explain further. So Francisco, uh, it depends on the case. So. It exceeds the, the confines of this actual, uh, this talk. But if you're doing, for example, physical surveillance, a lot of private investigators only do it, do it by themselves. Uh, and I actually like to use a team-based approach where we at least use three investigators. So you'd be working with somebody else in, in, that, in that case, if you're doing something for, for, for links or for Palm. And for the cyber investigator, do you need any special certification? Uh, Saurav, if I'm saying your name correctly, I, I don't know the names of the actual certifications off the top of my head, but uh, usually there are, there are specific um, certifications for these on the computer forensics side uh, where they need, uh, you need to have those certifications, uh, uh, especially if you're gonna be using some of the specialized software programs. So Karen said, what kind of paperwork is involved when solving a case? So I'll, I'll walk you through the process of when we actually get a client or what happens. So uh, someone comes to, we'll say Links in this example, uh, and they have a, we'll say an infidelity uh, claim. They believe their husband is cheating. So we'll do a actual, um, what I call a, a client's uh, intake interview. We'll gather all the information about th that uh, suspected cheater and uh, some contact information for the for the client. Uh, well, then we will develop a uh, in, that information is turned into what I call an intelligence package, just given to the field investigator to utilize um, in doing. And while that's simultaneously happening, uh, they're given uh, we we set out how we're going to solve this case, uh, and we develop an investigative plan and you work the investigative plan. Uh, every time something happens, an activity is done, an interview takes place, uh, or a physical surveillance is conducted, you document that with the investigative report. All those reports come together in what's called a report of investigation or a closing report, and outlines all those actions. So there is a lot of paperwork and report writing involved. It's actually probably the most important skill uh, for the field is report writing because you're going to take that those reports and you're going to turn it over to the client's attorney so they can utilize or turn, turn over the client so they can utilize uh, th those documents uh, for legal action. And uh, Ariely, is there any traveling involved? Uh, yes, it does depend on the case. Yes, there is travel involved. Uh, if we're uh, Cases, uh, we had to do an investigative interview out in Costa Rica. We also had um, people contact me in South Korea, uh, Nigeria. Um, it really, if you want to conduct international investigations, you can, but a lot of times it's easier to work in contract with 
an investigator out in that other country. See if there's anybody else. When do you guys normally start taking internships? So the internship at Palm specifically is going to be new. So if you just if you just contact us after this is over with, we're, we're going to get you on the on the distribution list, and you'll be contacted further. Okay. Um. So I'm actually right now I'm in my BS slash MA the dual degree. I'm actually should you, so sending you an email right now as this week, but um, so I don't really have much experience in this, but I've taken a lot of classes, and I wanted to actually start soon about. I wanted to actually start soon about um doing finding an internship or certification to start guiding me into the private investigator you know path right now. So how do I? Okay. How do you what? I'm sorry. No, so I'm saying like, how do I, you know, like who do I reach out to or like what classes and stuff? Or maybe you just can send me back an email when I send you and you'll be able to see what I'm talking I'll, about. I'll send you specifically an email if you want to include your resume in there and we can talk further. Okay, got it. Thank you. Uh, Manuel, I do not think there is a upper um, age limit. Uh, as far as I don't think there's a point, it's never too late. Um, I remember reading a story years ago about a woman who graduated college at 99. I, I feel the same way about this specific field as well. Uh, there, there, there's no uh, upper age limit at all. Um, hi, hi, Edward. It's Kristen again. Sorry about that. Um, I, no I'm also I'm also interested in the internship as well. Something starting preferably for you know later this year or the fall. I did just send you an email. Uh, I didn't attach my resume, but I can send that to you now unless you know you want to read the email first and then send me other information back. Go ahead and uh, send me uh, the resume as well. And I'll touch, I'll touch base with you after this, uh, after this call is over with. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, Michelle, if this is loud, can you share any experiences on tough cases and how it was solved? So it, it's interesting about private investigation. You actually watched some of the movies. Uh, I think one of them was uh, Walk Amongst Tombstones uh, with Liam Neeson. Uh, he, he's operating as an unlicensed private investigator. And the um, police pull him inside of a vehicle and they say, don't, you know, basically they say, don't tell us about that investigator privilege. Uh, I'm saying it in a nice way for, this, for the purposes of the chat. And uh, there actually is no such thing as uh, investigator privilege. You, you should keep uh, your client's information confidential, but uh, there's only a couple of legally recognized privileges and private investigators don't have, um, that unless they're working under an attorney and they can tap into that attorney client privilege. Um, so tough cases. Um, let's see. So we had a case where there was a, a individual, um, a man was trying to get uh, custody of his two kids. And uh, the courts have previously sided with the woman. Uh, he wanted to go about showing that uh, she was uh, being unfit towards the kids. And uh, we did this by providing around the clock 24 seven surveillance of, uh, of the individual. And by doing so, we built a pattern of life. Uh, it's very difficult uh, when you're watching someone 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, to do so uh, without without getting caught or getting compromised. So it really comes, it was really the planning aspect of it that it wasn't necessarily the execution of the of the physical surveillance itself. It was the actual, uh, the planning and developing uh, the scheduling and the test tracking 
ensuring everyone uh, stayed on, on board to do so. Uh, Rafael says, uh, does a PI carry a badge or any type of identifying item to display for access to different places where general public can get access? So I'm glad you asked this. Uh, so actually a private investigator doesn't have any, any more authority than any other private citizen to, to access things. Uh, with the exception of certain um, investigative databases that the police may utilize as well. Some databases are specifically for law enforcement or the intelligence community only, uh, but, and, but some the private investigators are allowed to use as well. Uh, for example, such as uh, Clear or uh, Accurant. These are databases used by the federal government, but they're also utilized by private investigation companies. Uh, and speaking of badges, um, every state has different requirements for badges because they don't want you to be confused or the idea that you might actually be a law enforcement officer when you're not. So every state it requires differently. At uh, links, uh, specifically, we don't have people utilize their utilize a private investigator badge at all because I don't want that uh, perception to be pushed. However, all private investigation, private investigators rather, get um, a credential card from the state to the licensing division for whatever, whatever state that is, uh, for example. Um, let's see if I show you Virginia again on me. So this is very simple, this is a card. So this is an example of, Vir of Virginia's, for example. It's a, it's a very simple card. So, that's how that works. So Francisco, there is a, um, what we call cross-pollination over uh, in, the, uh, in the, if you're working as a security guard, uh, a lot of people do, do dual duties as a private investigator and as a, a security guard. So sometimes, yes, it can help, especially if you um, your jo job is to observe and report as a security guard, uh, those, key, those skills are critical for private investigation. So Eva, if I'm saying your name correctly, this is actually, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up. Um, there are more dilemmas. And one of the first things you do uh, when you get into the fields, you have to set your moral compass. For example, I often ask, um, uh, lecture in down and in, in, uh, one of the private investigation academies down in Maryland that I lecture at. Uh, you know, I asked the students, uh, you have to, you know, set sh where where your limit is as long as it's legal and ethical. Some if some someone comes to you, for example, and says, you know, I've been accused of uh, molesting a child. You might not want to be involved at all with that, and you might immediately. Um, remove yourself from the case or not even take it at all. However, you might uh, take the case and it, as the case goes for, through, you see that uh, the individual who's representing you is not telling the truth and, and then you, know, you can remove yourself at that time as well. So there's, everyone has a different scale of when uh, they are, uh, where, where, their, where their line of stand is. Well, what is the process for removing yourself? And um, I guess it's sort of breaking a contract. And is there an example we, of when we, that happened to you that you can relate to? We have what's called, at least for my company, I can't speak for a company, we have what's called a termination clause written in the services agreement that you can terminate the case, of the, the working with the client for any reason, as long as we give three days written notice. So it could be because they're the color of their eyes are blue, but I mean that's it's the example. But obviously, that a little more something more severe. If you come across those findings and you don't want to be involved anymore, you can terminate and, with and, written consent. If a client, if you see that a client is in fact breaking the law, do you have like a, an imperative to report it, or do yes. you tend to do that? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I actually had, a, yeah, I'm glad you bring this up. I actually had a, uh, I had a person call uh, up me up years ago when they were trying to circumvent the um, government background uh, investigation. They were asking questions about the, the process and, and trying to figure out how they can get around it. So 
I took their information and I, I turned it over to the uh, organization they were applying with so they could be alerted of that behavior because that's not how you're supposed to go about those things. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sorry, right, folks, we have about nine minutes left. Um, great questions. Um, so get your final questions in. Um, it's made this pretty smooth. Let's see what we got here. Uh, could you recommend some PI companies that would help get started, get us started in New York and finish out classes and want to get started right away? Uh, Hori, if you want to email me, I'll give you a list of, um, of, of companies that I'm aware of. Um, especially, there's another company uh, that we work with in um, Massachusetts. They cover Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Connecticut as well. Uh, elite detectives. So there's 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 a ton of uh, opportunities out there. Uh, you can also do your own research and see uh, a lot of the job hiring sites that might be trying to bring on um, private investigators. You'll, you'll the terms will usually be uh, entry level private investigator or associate investigator or something along those lines, or you can search for private detective or just private investigator. We got any, uh, see anything else? Any final thoughts, folks? Again, I'll put my contact information in here if you want to talk further. Uh, yes, a PI does have to testify in court. Uh, that's why you have to have a clean criminal background, uh, specifically uh, for the uh, fact that you don't want the opposing uh, counsel to uh, be able to uh, impeach you or be able to, your, your testimony not to be credible because because of that. They can call it into question. Uh, th that's one of the one of the things PIs do is, is courtroom testimony. Uh, Ariel, what is your personal aspect about being a PI? Um, not sure. Could you elaborate a little further for me on what you mean? Be happy to answer. I mean, if you mean, uh, I guess if what you're trying to say is uh, like the difference between. Your the, uh, so, you know, it's just fun helping the, helping people in the in, in the private sector, helping us to to solve their problems, really. Uh, and at the end of the day, you actually get paid for it to do too. So, I know there's a lot of people out there who who, who may want to help their friends uh, help their friends out and, and they're always that that shows the crying or, or someone the, that they can get the job done kind of thing and you're always the one getting called you might you might fit well into the field that's the kind of personality you have uh, so actually again i work in the, the public side on the on the public side and the private sector side and, and they both have their um reasons for existence and they both uh, uh one's not better than the other uh, although I will tell you on the private sector side, if compensation is one of your one of the things you're looking for, uh, the public, the private sector side, there's no limit on on it. So, we'll take that as a last question, Edward. Okay. 
Yeah, no worries. Debbie said this is a valuable asset to have or one of the certifications uh, in investigations from uh, assets to uh, latch on with your company with the degree. So yes, uh, that's actually very, the, um, the American Society for Industrial Security, uh, which was mentioned here is uh, the closest thing we actually have to board certification in the private investigation because it's not something like physicians or something like that. Uh, there's several certifications they have. So the professional certified investigator certification is, I do recommend that you look into that or the certified protection professional uh, certificate or certification as well. They also have the physical security professional. And I believe they recently, they, they a while back, they introduced the uh, another one as well. Like the name for forget, forget the uh, slip of my mind right now. But yes, uh, I, I would additionally pursue those, those certifications. They are widely recognized uh, throughout the world as a, as a gold standard. Awesome. Uh, with that said, I uh, want to thank Edward for taking the time. That'll be a busy day <laughs> to come and talk to us. Um, I thank you folks for coming along and um, participating in this. We'll be having more of these series throughout the fall. Um, so be on the lookout. Um, definitely, I'll be sending those up. Um, but again, round of applause for Edward. Thanks. Um, I'm going to throw a clap emoji, throw that in there. <laughs> a little humor. There you go. Thanks. I really appreciate it, Edward. And thank you for taking the time. And with that said, take care, everyone. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you.